So what I wanted to ask you was, what role do you feel that sex appeal plays in the success of a female artist? And the reason I'm asking you is because we have internationally, internationally artists like Cardi B and Nicki Minaj who, who sex appeal. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's a big part of that success. So I want to know, being a female artist, how much of a role do you think that plays in a female being successful? It's an interesting question. Um, sex appeal plays a major role because you have to know your audience, I feel. Um, you know, if a woman came out on stage in a nun suit, you're not going to want to look. The first thing that catches anyone's eye is appearance. You know, you see someone walking down the road, the first thing you're going to see is physical appearance before they even speak to you. They may be the most beautiful person or know, the most intelligent person that you know, but the first thing that you're going to see is physical. So I think that it plays a major role because you want to catch the eye first. Um, sex appeal is a greater thing for, I wouldn't even say greater for males and females. I think they both have to do it. But for a female, we do it because we want to catch a male's eye, but not knowing that we don't really dress for males, we actually dress for females. You know what, to compete? Not necessarily to compete. Um, showing what you have. I wouldn't say to compete. You know, some people would say to compete, but I don't think it's to compete, at least for me. Let me speak for myself. I don't do it to compete. So do you do it for the compliments from other females? Mm, no, not for me. So what is some for women, you? some women do 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 it for the compliments. Um, I do because that's just how I feel that day. I want to wear this. I like to look a certain way, and that gives me confidence. And because I look a certain way, that gives me confidence to do anything that I need to do. Okay, so elaborate on this certain way that you um, like to look. Some days I may want to wear shorts, mm -hmm. you know, to show my legs. Mm -hmm. It's really because I'm hot. <laughs> it's not necessarily to get a compliment, but it's really because I'm hot and it's just that I just want to wear it. Um, I don't wear anything to impress anybody because I don't wear the latest fashion in terms of a uh, name brand. Right. I don't wear it. So I'm not out here trying to pose for the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I wear what I want to wear. I wear what's comfortable to me and what I want to do that day. Okay. So you spoke about your audience, right? Mm -hmm. So describe to me your audience. Who, who, do, who do you target when you create music or when you go on stage or when you dress? Or who's your audience? Um, I would say between the ages of, let's say, 18 to 50. Yeah, about 18 to 15. Male and female? Male and female. Okay. Um, I try to be presentable as much as I could, but I still have to put... Meaning conservative? Yeah, that. presentable. More, yeah, okay. conservative as best as I could. Okay. Um, but more so, I still have to be sexy with it. Okay. I am a, I'm a solid girl, so I'm not going to have my stomach out or my crotch or my ass out. I'm going to have maybe uh, a nice tight dress on to show curves, but something that's very, you know, sleek. And I want to appeal to anybody because if anyone of any age approaches me, I want to be able to have that conversation or that they're comfortable to come to me, you know? Some females who are of the older age, they don't want to come to a girl who has all of her breasts up, you know? Sometimes I do have shirts like that, and sometimes I wear it, but you know, sometimes I have to pull it back because you, the image that you're trying to uphold, right. you only have one name. So you try to uphold that image at all times. So how important is it for a female to know how to find that balance of, okay, you could be a little bit more provocative today, mm -hmm. today let's pull it back. How important is it? And do you it's, think, sorry, mm -hmm. and do you think most females, a lot of females can find that balance? It's, well, to answer your first question, it's very important to have that balance. You can't just wear provocative clothes all the time. Who are you trying to... Seduce. Yeah, not, not just seduce, but 
who are you trying to capture? <laughs> you know? Um, there comes a time and a place to wear certain things. Just like there's a time and a place to say something or a time and a place to do something. There's also a time and a place to wear certain things. So it's very important for females to have that balance to wear. Okay, if I go to church, I know I got to wear something that's a little bit more appropriate. Mm -hmm. You know? Even though God said to come as you are, you know, people take it out of context. But, you know, I think you want to be a little bit more presentable than that. You know, you wouldn't wear a beach top or bikini top and some shorts to church, you know? Right. So it's very important to have that balance. And to answer your next question, no, a lot of females don't have it. A lot of females do not have that balance. Um, and that's speaking general, not necessarily in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Um, from females that I've seen, they do have that balance in the music industry right. that I've met. But generally speaking, you would think that most A lot of females don't have it. And that's only because of society today. You know, the, the generation today is growing up on social media. Right. You know, I'm an 80s baby, so I grew up where, you know, it, you have to dress a certain way for this occasion, for that occasion, and so forth. Right. It's changed now that I'm older, but I don't look on Instagram for my clothes, or I don't look on Instagram and look at a star, or look at someone who's famous and be like, I want to look like her all the time. So, that, and like you said, that, that, that culture of imitation, mm -hmm. you think that spawned from insecurity? <laughs> I could almost agree with you and say yes. Um, but to a certain degree, I can also say no. The reason why I say yes is because a lot of a lot of females today are not, do not have a, they don't have a strong head on their body. They're not leaders, they're followers. So they tend to look at those things and imitate what they see instead of actually saying, you know what, that's not me, I don't want to do that. But they do it because they know it will give, give them likes or people will say, oh my God, you look good or oh my God, where you get that from mm -hmm. and so forth like that. And then you have the other half that does it. You know. So, what do you think caused that breakdown when we had females like Lauren Hill? And some names elude me right now, but we would call leaders. Where do you think that breakdown started? What do you think caused it? Well, coming from Erica Badu right. and Lauren Hill and Jill Scott. Right. And yeah, those are my, those, those are my sisters. <laughs> but, um, uh, where did the breakdown come? Mm. I don't know if it was Rihanna or Kim. Uh, okay. You know? Um, I'm trying to remember if Kim video came up before Rihanna umbrella. Because, you know, Rihanna had that good girl going on and then she turned into the bad girl. When you say Kim, you mean Lil' Kim? Lil, no, no, no. I mean Kim Kardashian. Oh. Because Kim, Lil' Kim was around a long time and doing provocative things, but no one did it. Right. No one followed. Very true. You know? It was only when Kim Kardashian came out and made it okay to, you know, be that person. Right. So, men being a harlot or more provocative, let's say, became easier to monetize, is what you think? Yeah. Okay. So, being an artist, a female artist, what are some misconceptions you think people have about you? About me, personally? I honestly don't know. Um, people, think, people think that I'm married. Why is that? I have no idea. I'm just saying I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you look it. You know. I love it. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. Um, people think that I um. I find that a lot of guys think that I'm very intimidating. Um. I don't see why. Maybe it's your confidence. That uh, definitely probably is it. And let me just say um. People thinking that you married is an idiot. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying. That's probably, I don't really know, you know. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to really find out, but the, the, the most thing that I've ever heard was intimidation and stuck up. People think that I'm stuck up. 
Do you think you suck up? You think you have to approach? No. Sure. <laughs> Mind you. Okay. When I'm talking, <laughs> let me be honest. Right. My friends always tell me when you want to find Monday at a performance, look for the darkest corner. I'm always there. Okay. I'm always by myself. Okay. But when I walk through, I always have an RBF face on. Okay. That's a resting bitch face. And it's not because <laughs> it's not because of anything. It's just that I walk through and. I guess I demand attention, but it's nothing from it. I just, I don't know. Okay, but since you said that you are looking, right? If a guy was to approach you, mm -hmm. what should be the approach? You don't have to give away all the secrets. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? When, when they walk, when you see them heading in your general direction and it's mm -hmm. clear that they're coming to you, mm -hmm. what are you looking for that would make you more receptive? Um, I'm so simple. A simple, hey, how are you? It's pretty much okay. Right. That your first word could be, hey, how are you? Okay. Um, nothing, nothing cliche, nothing corny, like solid, ain't chunky, <laughs> my size. You know, all that, I've gotten all <laughs> solid. You won't fit in my wallet type thing. Oh, it'd be all right. Man. Okay. It's not bad. So, but the guy comes and approaches me, a simple, hey, how are you? And that would relax the RBS. Mm -hmm. or bring a I'm smile from that. I'm fine. Wow. You know, simple handshake, regular handshake. Hey, how are you? My name is so and so. I saw you from a classroom, my daughter is very beautiful. Thank you. So, why do you think, why do you think, now to be on the topic, why do you think guys approach girls with this catch phrase or, or, or this, this line or. What do you think it is? I don't know. I just think they're assholes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where they got it from. I don't know how it started. I don't know if it's just if it's a Bahamian thing. I don't know. I just it's it's, it's not necessary. But you know, like I say, I'm I'm from a different era, so you can't approach me like that and think that you're gonna get a response. Okay, so. I saw that you had a performance recently at you, um, Unplugged 2, yes. right? Uh -huh. um, now, I'd like to ask you, as far as stage performance, female stage performance locally, mm -hmm. what do you think about them in general? And where do you think you stand rank amongst all of the female performers, stage performance? As far as stage performance, I should say. I think all the female performers that performed to unplug were awesome. Okay. All of them were completely awesome. Everyone brought it that night. You know, there was no holding back, there was no fair. Everyone brought it. Um where I rank myself, there is not it isn't a scale for me. It's just a level for me. Me, I don't rank myself below and I don't rank myself above. Reason being because I don't feel like I'm better than anybody, and I know that I'm not below anyone. I think we are here. I think we're level. At the same time, we all have different genres that we do. You know, you have soca, you have um, R&B, hip hop, you have um, calypso, you have jazz, all of the above. I am R&B and reggae. Okay. I'm actually all because I've I've done all. But it's not my forte, it's not what I actually do all the time, you know? People, they, they see me as a reggae artist and an R&B artist. Um, more so reggae because I sing with Phyllis. Right. Um, and that's, that's fine, I have no problem with that. Because I put my flavor to anything. Anything that you put in front of me, I can do it. But it's not my forte to say, go and do a Calypso song. That's not me. But you're not boxing. I'm not boxing. I, I'll try. Right. Definitely would try. You know? Um, it's not me to do a Reiki scrape song. I will try it. I will try any genre and see if it works. Right. You know? Just to say that I did it. You know? Because I don't ever want to li limit myself to, to music. I think everyone should be able to dabble. Being a musician, everyone should be able to dabble and taste a little bit of everything just to see where you are because sometimes that could actually show you hey, I mean like this more, I think I want to further branch off into something like this, mm -hmm. you know? My first love was jazz. Right. Always loved jazz. Okay. Me, you know? 
Anita Vega, that's, that's, that's my heart. <laughs> Shaka Khan, that's me, but Anita, love. From love the old school, I'm with you. really <laughs> from the old school. And anytime, that's where, that's actually where I started, okay. in the jazz band. So anytime that I did anything, it was always jazz. So when I branched off into reggae, I liked it too. So who's to say if I branched off into something else, I would love it. So who exposed you to these different genres of music? Your parents, um, like jazz. That's not something that you would hear many young females, females say. Right. Um. Hmm. I can definitely say that my father, um, he exposed me to jazz. He exposed me to Shaka Khan and Anita Baker. Okay. Um, and then being hanging, being around different people, exposed me to different music. You know, because I'm the type of person I. If I'm listening to a song on the radio, if I have my CD player playing, you know, a friend of mine would say, hey, I want you to listen to this song. I think I like this, okay. and I think you may like it. You know, listen to it because, you know, maybe your flavor may not be the same genre, but it may be something that you may like. Okay. And it's like, oh yeah, I do like that, you know? So just meeting different people in my lifetime has actually brought me to love so, so much different types of music. 